sitting outside tonight, it's such a beautiful night, it's pretty still, uh, it's around 10.30, so it's still quite light, the sun's just almost going down. Um, I watched a really good film today, well I've been waiting for this film, Fairweather Man, uh, to arrive from Australia. Um, I don't know if many of you know um, this Australian uh, famous dead painter, <laughs> uh, Ian Fairweather. He has such an interesting life story. Um, he spent the last 20 years of his life living as a hermit um, on uh, Bribey Island, which is just off uh, the Queensland coast, uh, where he just painted. All of his life he'd just been in love with painting. Um, you know, his dad was uh, wanted him to be in the military and you know was really like I guess they were all disappointed that he wanted to be an artist but um, he and he did eventually go into the military uh, then he moved he moved moved around a bit um, and just had such an interesting life and um, he ended up settling in Australia like I said uh, when he turned 60, he uh, went up to Darwin and made like a uh, raft out of wood and shit. And um, he sailed. He was going to Timor. So he sailed for 16 days. And they even they wrote in the paper that, you know, famous Australian artist, dead, blah, blah, blah. They already written his obituary. But um, he ended up uh, washing up in Timor and um, the authorities uh, took him uh, because they thought he was a spy and um, sent him back to England. Um, and then he eventually came back to Australia and um, settled. But um, extraordinary man because he was so passionate and dedicated for art and for painting. and. You know, he lived on Bribey Island and he just he just spent his time painting. He lived in a shack, like it was just made out of bark and it was really, you know, minimal, minimal. Um, when he ran out of uh, materials to paint on, he would just paint on paper. And, you know, he's a conservative's worst nightmare because a lot of his work that he created, he just created on newspaper and um, they've deteriorated quite a bit. He'd spent quite a number of years working on a series and he just rolled them up like like a big bunch of newspapers and then sent them to London uh, where he they was having an exhibition and when the gallery got them, I think it was the Redfern Gallery, and when they went to unroll them they were all stuck together so that was like all of those years ruined um, because because of how how he sent the works, but I really love his work. It's it's very primitive in a lot of ways, but it just plays with um, just pure emotion. There's lots of energy and movement, um, and I mean, he's one artist worth checking out. Uh, you know. I love his story and I love something that someone said about him was that, um, um, hang on, I wrote it down because I can never remember anything, but, um, um, and it's about the idea that um, heaven is in the painting, it's not in the destination and um, he was always fascinated by, by the process and the actual journey rather than the destination because let's face it the fun bit for us artists is really making the work isn't it it's starting out it's creating uh, and it's reacting to each part as you go along and and that's what that's what um, the enjoyment of well for me and for a lot of people is uh, of 
of the process of painting. I mean, when you get to the end and it's finished, I mean, that's the conclusion, that's the end, that's like, it's the anti-climax really, because, okay, you've got the work now, and now it's, you know, it's time to move on. So, I love that idea of um, heaven is in the painting, it's in the doing. Um, and I think it's something that I try and focus on when I'm creating is I focus on the now and what's happening and enjoying that process. Even if I'm not achieving something, I'm still enjoying the actual process. Um, and something else I really find fascinating about him is he didn't really care about longevity of his work, obviously, because he's just painting on paper and stuff, then, you know, it's not going to last forever. And um, I think it was a need for him to to just get it out, to just paint his emotion out. Um, he didn't want to be around people. He was a hermit. He wanted to keep to himself. Um, and it's amazing how those type of people that are like to be a hermit, that, that are with, with, withdrawn, everyone's attracted to. You know, it's always fascinating to if you meet an artist that's like that, you just want to get to know them, like you just want to get inside their head more. Whereas if you meet an artist that's, you know, always wants to be in the spotlight, always wants to be famous, always, you know, always there, um, it sort of loses its appeal somehow, if you know what I mean. There's more intrigue in an artist who's more passionate about keeping private. I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say. Um, and you know, he never even went to any of his, uh, well, most of his gallery shows. And you know, they usually sold out fairly quickly, uh, within a couple of minutes and stuff like that. But he, he uh, went uh, to one of his gallery shows and he was just like, oh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have painted that. Or, you know, he was like, he, he didn't want to be there thing is did he ever ever realize what a wonderful painter he was he was the true epitome of what a, a great painter should be you know living his life in the way that he had to for his work well how do you spend your time i paint gamut 